Hello there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The holiness of God. I think we forgot of his holiness. But I thank the Lord for his holiness. I thank the Lord for his grace, his mercies. Everlasting, our everlasting Father. We thank our King Yeshua, our beloved. Thank the Father through his Son for his Holy Spirit. Wonderful. This is beautiful. All is beautiful. Revelations, absolutely beautiful. All right. In this video, I wanted to go over the holiness of God. I mean, for real, the holiness of God is almost... No, you know, I'm not going to even say almost. The holiness of God is scary. The holiness of God is scary. His holy, his his holiness can cut through someone very sharply. His brilliant splendor, as it said in scriptures, when Christ comes with his brilliance and his splendor, the Antichrist will be devoured because of that brilliance. That's his holiness. Brighter than the sun, the sun would seem dull. Read and study the book of Revelation. When the Lord sits upon his throne, he said he glimmers like a jasper. That's just his holiness. And I said, holiness look like that? It's sharp. Let me give you a story of in scriptures where uh, the Israelites, they wanted to see God. But by them wanting to see God, in their minds, they didn't know what they, <laughs> they, didn't, know, <laughs> they didn't know what was going to happen. The fierceness and the holiness of God. People don't know. The, thing is, the world... does not know the reality when God reveals himself unto the world. These people will want to die. <coughs> In scripture, the Israelites Asked Moses and said, we want to see God. They, they didn't know what they was asking for. Okay? Moses said, okay. He asked the Lord. The Lord agreed. So God commanded them to wash themselves clean, to abstain from fornication. For what he said in the Old Testament just basically... Um, was a represent was a represented repenting in these last days to be um, stripped of sin. You know how uh, Jesus said, "Be holy, for your God in heaven is holy," or "Be holy, for your Father is holy." Okay, so before God wanted to reveal Himself to the Israelites, He told them, "Wash." This is like a physical, physical, everybody physically take a bath, okay? And then with that, at the same time, the men and the women could not fornicate. This is another um, uh, represent, representation of holiness. God says, you have to do this first before I come to you. This is how holy he is. He said, basically, it's, it's, it's like a prepare yourself. Okay? Prepare yourself. So, okay, if he does it like that, at Yeshua's second coming, those who lived in sin and they see the holy, his holiness, power, and great glory, how can they stand? 
his holiness penetrating t- uh, through the hearts of sinful man, dirty, he will kill them. That's why I say the holiness of God cuts sharply. At Christ's second coming, if you are not like him in holiness, but he commands us to be holy, so you can't say it's not, it's, it's impossible. He commands us, so if he commands us, he's going to help us remain holy, be holy, so that we may approach him So the Israelites showered. They were they refrained from fornication. I mean it was thousands and thousands and thousands of them, okay? And then the Lord was going to descend from heaven unto the Mount of Sinai. Yeah. To the unto the Mount of Sinai. But before he descended, he commanded Moses, place a border around the mountain, a boundary around the mountain, and tell them do not cross that boundary. God said that to Moses to tell the people, to warn the people. In in this particular scripture, God kept saying it over and over and over again. Place a boundary where I'm about to descend upon the mountain to reveal myself to the people. Warn them. Do not cross that boundary. Listen to his holiness. And this is the same holiness that people boast in their hearts that they're ready for his that, that they're ready for him to come so they can fight against him. The blind does not know God and his glory and his majesty. Okay? I'm even bracing myself to see God. Brace. Okay. I say to myself, Am I even ready? Okay? But the wicked that live completely in wickedness, sin, boasted in their hearts, people keep saying, and this is what they say, they say, oh, people keep saying that he's coming. Why don't he just come to show himself? You don't want him to come. Because when he comes, when he comes, you're going to die. Point blank period. When Jesus comes and you're not right by him, you're going to die. He's going to kill you, okay? Many people are going to say he's a murderer. He's going to kill people. So Moses placed the boundary, and he warned the people multiple times as God had told him. Multiple times as God had told him. God kept telling him the same thing, warning him. He, listen to what God says. God says, if any one of them cross that boundary, and he says, even if it's an animal, if an animal so happens to uh, go astray and stumble wearily uh, um, towards that boundary that you have marked off for people not to cross, God says, they should die. That's what the Lord says. The Lord says they shall die. They will die. But the thing is, his holiness. So when the Lord descended upon the mountain, that mountain was not holy until he descended upon it. He made it holy. So the thing is, if people cross the boundary to where that hope, to where he made that mountain holy because he descended upon the mountain to make it holy, anyone that touched it, though they washed themselves, though they were famed for fornication, prepping themselves to see God, God says they still will be killed. That scares me. And that's a, it's mind-blowing. But that makes me worship him even stronger. I said, my God is just that holy. Even when he appeared to Moses at the burning bush, he told Moses, take off your shoes, take off your sandals, for you're standing on holy ground. That ground was not holy before the bush. Okay, it's when he's there, he makes everything else holy. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit descends from heaven to live in a believer, that the Holy Spirit makes you holy. That's why you're acceptable before God, because the Holy Spirit that abides in you seeks to flush out all sins so that you can stand before the Father and not be killed. The Holy Spirit makes you holy. You are a temple which is holy unto God. This is when you hear in the last days when it speaks about the abomination of desolation. We are 
his holy temple because his Holy Spirit abides in us. But that abomination is when you take God out and you put another God, anything that uh, opposes God in, you have set up an idol in a holy place. And that is in your heart, professing yourself to be a believer. You set up an idol in pleasure, having renounced God, a separated God, to put an idol in your heart. You are holy. You are a temple. To set up an idol in your heart, that idol is not supposed to be there. That's why scripture says, uh, uh, the, uh, what it says, um, he was set something about he was set himself where he should not be. Yes, idols should not be in one who professes God, having the Holy Spirit. They should not be in your heart. God is in my heart. His throne is in my heart. So for his throne to be in my heart, he is the master over my life. He commands me to do this. He commands me to do that. And I reveal the fact that he's a master when you obey. If you don't obey, God is not your master, nor is there a throne in your heart for him to sit down on and reign in your life. The holiness of God that cuts sharply. So the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai, and as he was descending, the ground shook as if there was a vast earthquake. And there was thunder and lightning, and the ground shook. Thunder, and, and that's just his presence. I said, that's crazy. This is the God that the world is fighting against. This is the same God where he said he will send his his son in his glory and in his power to where the Antichrist would see him. The Antichrist would die because of his splendor. The holiness of God that sh cuts sharply. The Antichrist full of sin, you can't stand before brilliance. You can't stand before the holiness. The holiness in itself has power. Christ said, when the help, when the Spirit comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have power. And this power is to resist sin, resist rebellion. So for the Lord to be full with holiness, brighter than the sun, he has power. This holiness is power, has power. So the point where Christ comes with his holiness and his power to cut sharply the Antichrist, his sin is too strong. There's no holy in the Antichrist. The Antichrist is dissolved, killed, no more because of the power of God's holiness. Perfect and pure and radiant. Absolutely no sin, no sin. Sin would flee. Sin would have nowhere to go. Sin would evaporate, disperse, disappear, repel, gone, flee in terror from God's holy power. His name is to be feared, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Many should tremble at that, but they don't because they don't know God. When the first thought, thought when, we, when, when many people think about God, there's no in-depthness. There's no complete awe. There's no thought of great dominion, great power, great wisdom, great knowledge. They don't think of how deep and strong and sharp His holiness is. So for one to live in sin 
having been, de- having been deceived by the people of the world, saying that their sins are acceptable before God. But when Christ comes in the glory and the holiness and the purity and the radiance, having a double-edged sword in his mouth, all those who refused will be cut, will be killed by the holiness of his power and the breath of his mouth. That is to be feared. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. God doesn't change. He's still like this to this day. Who can stand before him on his throne, at his throne? Who can stand before him being on the fence with him? Being on the fence about his son. Being on the fence about his commandments. Who? Let me just tell you, you won't make it alive. He's the same God of old. He didn't change. The thing is, he's merciful, graceful, long-suffering. That's what the world sees. But they take him for someone to be ran over. God asks, he doesn't ask us. God commands all who call upon his name. Jesus said, be ye holy. The only way you could be holy is to receive his Holy Spirit. There's no other way. Be ye holy, for your God is holy. But who is being holy? Why do you allow sin to remain? You won't be able to stand before God. I'm going to be real with you. Straight up, you won't be able to stand before God, but God will kill you. People don't like to hear that, but this is the straight truth. I'd rather tell you the truth than to tell you a lie, and then when he comes, you see something that I have not warned you about. You have to study what the Lord has done to people in the Old Testament. He had not changed. Refusing his correction, he flooded the whole earth. Refusing his correction, fire and brimstone devoured people, children, holiness. He saved the Israelites from Egypt. They crossed the parted sea, and he killed them. Rebelliousness, they, by them being rebellious, he killed them in the wilderness. His holiness. There were two sons that were attempting To sacrifice falsely unto the Lord. The Lord killed them. There was a man in scripture, and I forgot his name. While they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord commanded that there's only a certain people that are to touch it as they carried it. But there was a young man who he walked right next to it and seen that the Ark of the Covenant was about to fall, or he thought it was about to fall. So he tried to stabilize it by touching it, and he was killed. God 
God didn't change. Remember in the days of Pharaoh, what God had done to the people in the days of Egypt. But people believe he changed. People believe that he's this soft God. No. What you see is mercy. What you see is grace. For there's written in scriptures where the Lord says he restrains he restrained his own self for a long time. He remained silent for a long time while people were living in sin, going to and fro, running after their lust. God said it in scriptures, he said, I remain silent. I held my own self back from doing the things that he did in Old Testament, but there would come a day where he would say, I refuse to remain restrained. I refuse to remain silent. Judgment. He ain't changed. But these are the people in these last days that scoff in the market, walking after their own lust, saying that, beating their chest, saying, he needs to come. I want to come. I want him to come. I want to see what he can do. No. You don't want to see what he can do. I don't even want to be here to see what he can do, okay? For me to see what he can do, the Lord must place the seal on my forehead as far as protection. Because for me to see what he can do, I would die in the mist. All things like hurricanes and earthquakes and droughts come from the Almighty. We can't even survive that. But you say you want to see the face of God in his holiness, in his brilliance. The world cannot even uh, survive or withstand hurricanes, earthquakes, droughts. But you say you want to stand against God opposing the Almighty. Many of you, when you hear the, the, um, the sound of thunder, from the east to the west, and you're startled. But you want to stand before God in His glory. Be ye holy, for your God in heaven is holy. All nations shall flee from Him. When he rises to shake up the heavens and earth, they will see the face of God and of Christ. This is what they've been asking, though. Out of the boasting of their heart, this is a, this is what amazed me. Out of the boasting of the foolish heart, they say, "Come, come. We want to see what you can do. We want to see what type of power you have." But then, when he comes, why do you run? Why do you flee? You tell the rocks to hide you because you're scared. This is what you wanted, but it's not going to be taken back. Vengeance, justice upon the world who refused to know God, upon the world who opposed God, upon the world who killed his saints and his servants, the prophets. For it's written in scriptures to all the wicked. Your worst nightmare will become a reality when Christ comes. Your worst nightmare will become a reality. And to the saints, your hope will come true. To the saints, your hope and your hope and what you always hope for will come true. And that is the second coming of the Messiah. That is the redeeming of you unto God. But the wicked, your worst nightmare. Your worst fears will come true. The holiness of God. Who can stand? The only ones that can stand are those who are holy as Christ has commanded us to be holy. You can't be holy by yourself. You must renounce yourself. You must surrender. You must throw in the white towel. You must receive his Holy Spirit to make you holy, to prepare you to stand before the Almighty in which you yourself will tremble at his feet. I know I will tremble at his feet. He is God. He is Jehovah, the Ancient One. The God of gods. 
No God before him, no God after him. He is the living God that breathes and moves and have called us to being. Everything in this world, in this earth, is his glory. But his glory has turned into wickedness. But he shall restore it. This all belongs to him. You shall see him. Whether you will die by him or you will be redeemed and drawn to him as children. Be ye holy, my brothers and sisters. As your God in heaven is holy, he commends all of those who profess to be his children to receive his spirit. Y'all take care.